Today we'll be doing more linear regression. For the first part, we're going to be finding the difference between the observed and predicted values. So let's talk about what that means. And remember, anytime you're watching a video, you can pause to take more time to write down the notes. You can go backwards and rewatch the problems. Um, I encourage you not to skip ahead, but to watch the steps to learn how to do these. All right, so in your calculator, and you do need to do this with me to practice the steps. So in your calculator, you're going to go to Stat and press Enter for Edit. And remember, if you go up to the top, you press Clear, Enter, and go over to the other one, Clear, Enter, so you can clear it out. The hours worked is your X value. Your X's are the ones that are going to go in L1, and your Y values are going to go in L2. So in L1, I'm putting in 6, 7, 8, 4, and 6. L2, 71, 90, 82, 26, and 55. Pause the video if you need more time to enter these in. Then you're going to press STAT again, go over to CALC, and get your linear regression. All right. So the question says, what is the difference? Difference means we're going to be subtracting at some point. What is the difference between the observed value at x equals 7 and the predicted value at x equals 7? All right, when you observe something, it's what you see with your eyes. So if you look up here at the table, what do you see when x equals 7? Well, when x equals 7, I see that she earned $90 in tips. So the observed value is 90, it's what you see. The predicted value is gonna come from the calculator. The calculator gives you a prediction. So to find the predicted value, you're gonna to go to your y equals, and I'm gonna clear out what's in there. I'm gonna hit vars down to number five, over to EQ and press enter and now I'm going to go to my table and I want to know when it is x equals 7. Now some of y'all already know how to work the table and you may do it a different way and that's okay. The way I'm going to get to x equals 7 I'm going to go to second window and I'm going to tell it to start at 7. Then I'm going to hit second graph. And at seven, the calculator's prediction is she would get $77.27 in tips. Well, we still need to answer the question. What is the difference between these numbers? So we need to subtract. To get back to the main screen in your calculator, you hit second, quit. So I'm going to do 90 minus 77.27. So your final answer for number one is 12.73. All right, let's do another one. Number two, the table below shows the charge for different numbers of shirts for an online website. The company charges a cost per shirt and a setup fee per order. What is the difference, so we're going to be subtracting, between the observed and predicted total cost of earning 150 shirts? So shirts is your X, so this is X equals 150, okay? All right, um, let's go ahead and get the observed value. That's what we see. So in the table, for 150 shirts, I observe that the total cost is going to be 354. 354. Okay. All right. To get the predicted, you have to use the calculator. So I'm going to go to Stat, Edit, Clear, Enter, Clear, Enter, and 100, 125. If you're having trouble with your calculator, you can ask somebody around you to help you. 345, 363, 354, and 339. Alright, hit stat again, go over to calc, 
down to number four, enter, enter, enter. All right, so I need to put that in my Y equals. So I hit the Y equals button, clear out what's in there, then hit the VARs down to number five, over to EQ, enter. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and go to second window. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to start at 150. And then I'm gonna go to second graph. And remember, you can always slide the video back and rewatch those calculator steps. All right, the calculator predicts the cost will be, it predicts the cost to be 348.9. So my last step is to subtract these two numbers. Second quit, 354 minus 348.9. And your answer to this one is 5.1. Part two, residual value. Residual value is what we just did. We just didn't have a vocabulary term for it yet. Residual value is the difference in the observed and predicted value. Again, pause the video if you need more time to write. A residual plot is a graph that shows the difference between the actual data and the predicted data. The independent variable x is graphed on the horizontal axis, and the residual value, again, the way you get the residual value is to take the actual one minus the predicted, is graphed on the vertical axis. So that would be your y. If the residual plots are randomly scattered around the horizontal axis, a linear model is the best choice to model the data. If the residual plot shows a pattern that does not appear random, a nonlinear model would most likely be a better fit. Okay. These are residual plots. These are not original scatter plots. These are residual plots. When you see a residual plot, if it is randomly scattered like this, if it's a residual plot, then the best fit is a linear model. If it is not randomly scattered, then it's a non-linear model. Same thing here. This one would be a non-linear model if it's a residual plot. Now, if it was an original scatter plot, like if I had your shoe size here and your height here, and I made a scatter plot, this one would be linear. That would be linear. If they give you a residual plot, and they want to know if it's linear. You want one that is scattered. Okay. All right, so let's do an example. Number three, construct a residual plot based on the data below. Sorry, that's a typo. Data below. All right, so here are your x values. Here are your y values. This was the original table. They're giving you the predictions. These are from the calculator. They've already done that. So they're giving you the predictions from the calculator. And they want you to find the residual. The residual is the difference between the original and predicted. All right, it's the difference between the original and predicted. So we're going to be subtracting these. All right, so three minus 2.5 is 0.5. Four minus five is negative one. Nine minus 7.5 is 1.5. Seven minus 10 is negative three. You may use your calculator. 13 minus 12.5 is 0.5. All right, now we're going to graph this. This is your X. These are your residuals on the side. All right, these are your residuals. So um, here's how we're not gonna be using any of those numbers. We're gonna be using the five and the 0.5. So 
All right, let's see. It's going 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So we'll go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Those are your X values. All right, and then your residuals are going all the way from negative 3. So we'll go from negative 3 to positive 3. Just making a scale. All right, so your first point, 5, 4, 0.5 would be there. 10, negative 1, 15, 1.5, 20, negative 3, and 25.5. Does it imply that the data is linear or nonlinear? So the answer is linear because the residual plot is randomly scattered. Again, this was a residual plot. Okay. All right, number four, a statistician collected the following data to explore the relationship between two variables, x and y. The statistician performed a linear regression and also plotted the residuals Based on the residual plot, the statistician decided to exclude one data point. The statistician then performed linear regression on the set of remaining data points. The result was that the new linear model fit the remaining data more closely than the original model. Okay, so it said that they found the residuals. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's find the residuals. So to do that, we need to get our predictions. And then we will find our residual. Okay, so let's put these in stat. So hit stat, edit. All right, so 2 .3, 4 .2, 5 .1, 6 .4, 8 .2, 8 .5. Okay, all right, and hit stat again, count down to number four. Okay, so I'm gonna put those in my y equals, clear out what's in there, go to um, vars, five over to eq, enter. All right, so I'm gonna go to second table set, and we'll tell it to start at 2.3, and at 2.3, the prediction is 11.3. 433. All right, then I need to go to 4.2 second table set 4.2 and that is 16.433 and then 5.1 18.5 four, twenty-two point two two three, eight point two, twenty-six point nine six, and sorry, eight point five, twenty-seven point seven four nine. Okay, once I get my predictions from the calculator, how do I find the residuals? I subtract these. So this is going to be 0.433, be negative, 16.5, minus 16.433, 0 0.067, 19.2, minus 18.802, Point three nine eight 
23.1 minus 22.223. 0.877, 24.3 minus 26.96, and 29.5 minus 27.749, 1.751. Okay, so let's go back and remind you of what the goal here is. It said the statistician excluded one data point and the remaining data was more close to the original model. So if I look at my residuals, which one is the highest value? 2.66 is the highest, which means that the difference between the prediction and the actual value was the furthest away than all the other ones. So this is the one that was furthest out. It was the outlier. So 8.2 is the one that the statistician would exclude. Okay. All right, number five. Omar determined that the linear best fit model for a set of data is y equals negative 1.98x plus 1347. What is the approximate value of the residual for his observed data value 20978? All right, so this is your x and y. All right, they've already given you the observed one. This is your observed, 978. So the residual is going to be the observed minus the predicted. All right, so we know the observed is 978. How are we going to find the prediction? We're going to have to put it in our calculator. They have already given us a y equals. So we go to the y equals clear out. We need to type this in, negative 1.98. Right here is the x, right there that you're going to use, plus 1347. And I'll go to second window, and my x value is 200. And so the prediction is 951. So I need to subtract those. 978 minus 951, and you get 27, which is B. Mrs. Bradley made a scatter plot for her students' individual homework averages on the x axis and their individual average test scores on the y axis. All right, let me go ahead and stop there and draw a picture. So she said she put the homework average, this is a good test taking strategy you do, draw a picture, homework average on the X and average test score on the Y. She calculated the equation of the line of best fit as Y equals 0.8X plus 18. Jillian, one of Mrs. Bradley's students, had a homework average of 70 and a residual of negative six, what was Jillian's average test score? Okay, so she had a homework average of 70. So homework average is an X. So X is 70. And it wants to know what was her average test score, which is the Y. So this one is a, a tricky question. We're going to put this in our y equals 0.8x plus 18. And we're going to put in 70 for our, our star and our x value. Go to our table. 74 is the prediction. 74 is the predicted test score. 74 is the predicted test score. I want to know what was her actual test score, the average test score that she actually got in the class. Well, I know the residual is negative 6. So remember the formula for residual is actual minus predicted. Actual and observed are the same thing. Actual minus predicted equals the residual. All right, do we know her actual score? No, I'm going to put X. Do we know the prediction? Yes, the predicted test score is 74. 
do we know the residual? Yes, the residual is negative 6. So then I would add 74 to both sides, and so you get the answer to be 68. Okay. All right, part three, percentage difference. To find a percentage, you divide by the total. The table below shows the pant size and age of five boys. Approximately what percent of the boys' ages is more than one year different than the age predicted by the line of best fit? Okay, so here's their pant size, here's their actual age, and we need to find out their predicted age. All right, so let's go to stat, edit, clear, enter, clear, enter, three, four, five, six, seven, three, three, six, five, six. All right, stat, calc, four, enter, enter, enter. All right, I'm gonna go to my y equals, clear that out, vars, number five over to EQ. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to start at three. This triangle stands for delta table. It's what your table's counting up by. And in this one, I need it to count up by one. So make sure you have a three and a one in the spot. So now we're gonna go back to second graph. So for three, their prediction is three. For four, the prediction is 3.8. For five, the prediction is 4.6. For six, 5.4. And for seven, it is 6.2. Approximately what percent of the boys' ages is more than one year different from the age predicted? So I'm looking at their actual age and their predicted. How many are more than one year different? Well, three and three, that's the same. Three and 3.8, that's less than a year. Six and 4.6, that one is more than a year. Five and 5.4, nope, that's less than a year. Six and 6.2, less than a year. So there's only one boy out of one, two, three, four, five, who are different than more than one year. So I need to divide one divided by five. And to make that a percent, you multiply by 100, which gives you 20. So the answer is A. All right, last one. The table shows the results of a study done to see whether there's a relationship between the number of hours of study, between the number of hours a student, I should say student, Watches television each week in the student's grade point average. Approximately what percent of the GPAs are more than 0 0.2 points different from the line of best fit for the data? All right, last one. Stat, edit, clear it out. All right, remember this one's gonna be L1, that one's L2. Three, five, six, six, eight, ten. 12 and 15. Remember, you can pause. I'm going to go back over. 3.8, 3.7, 3.7, 3.6, 3.2, 3.4, 3.3, 1.6. Okay, so stats, count. I need to get my linear regression line. Go to y equals, clear out, vars, stats, eq. All right, for this one, it needs to start at three, which it already does. All right, so the prediction for three is 4.0793. For five, it is 3.6727. For six, 
3.4694. Remember, I'm looking at my x values. These are the x's. I'm looking at those. Okay. Um, for 8, it's 3.0629. Scroll down for 10, 2.6564. For 12, 2.2498, and 15, 1.64. All right, what percentage of the GPAs were more than 0.2 points different? So now I'm comparing GPAs. So this was the actual GPA, and then these are the predicted GPAs. So I'm done with that column now. All right. Are these point two different? Yes. Are these more than point two different? No. Are these? Yes. Are these more than point two different? Let's subtract and see. That looks pretty close. 3.6 minus 3.4694. Nope, that's less than point two. All right, what about this one? No, and again, you can subtract if you need to. 2.4 minus 2.6564. Yes, that's bigger than 0.2. It doesn't matter that it's negative. So those are bigger than 0.2. That one, no. That one, no. All right, so how many were different? One, two, three. If I need a percent, it's gotta be three out of the total. How many total? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So three out of eight, three out of eight times it by 100, 37.5%, which rounds to 38%.